So, okay, here we go for our opening. One moment. This is the snake. <laughs> Those in uniform, please salute. Those who are not, put your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Those in uniform, please salute. Those no, who are not, stop. Right hand All right. Here we go. For those who are just joining us, uh, let's do some introductions again. My name is Esmeralda Bonk. I am one of your roundtable commissioners, and my partner is... Angelique Minette. I'm Ishkote roundtable commissioner. And tonight, our uh, guest speaker is Melissa Rubik. Wave hi. All right. Um, with that being said, I think we're going to do our prayer now. This is a Cub Scout, uh, Cub Scout roundtable. We're trying out something new. So if you are enjoying this format, let us know. Tonight we are doing a Den Leader's Prayer. Lord, I am a Den Leader. Now what do I do? Surely I'm dreaming and soon I'll come too. Does it make any sense when you can't stand kids to take eight little cubbies? Lord, I flip my lid. But they said I was needed, so I'll do my best to help my cubs pass each and every test. We'll meet each week to play and to learn and to talk of achievements we can earn. Some days we'll be trying, of this I am sure, and I know I'll wonder if I can endure. But when I can see my cubs' progress in ranks, Lord, I will have received my thanks. All right, so now we're going to jump into a segment that we call the Info Minute, and this is to let you know what's going on in council um, and give you a little bit of update. Um, please know that because of what's going on in the world right now, um, all of our things are subject to change at short notice. Um, we don't have a whole lot of control if we suddenly get cut back to the amount of people. Um, but as of right now, as far as I am aware, as far as us and I are both aware, uh, these things are what are coming up. So first, uh, I want to talk about wood badge. Now, uh, Ez, do you want to give them a little rundown about what wood badge is while I get the video ready? All right, wood badge is a intense, and when I say intense, I mean T-E-N-T-S, uh, uh, tra leadership training. So anyone who is a registered leader could join us to learn how to be good leaders because good units require good leaders. So most people kind of compare this to a lot of um, leadership training that a lot of companies send their, a lot of their executives too, but in this case, it revolves around um, scouts. So if you're interested, we still have some spots open. Um, we are thoroughly waiting to present this wonderful weekend with you guys. Uh, what the fuck? What? Someone's not muted. No, oh, anyway. Anyway, so. Uh, we have a, something to share with you guys about Wood Badge. A lot of us have been training and been learning to this new curriculum to present to many of our council's leaders or outside of council, as a matter of fact. So anyone is welcome. Ready? Yep, I think so. We take, we take our, our job very, very seriously and uh, our Wood Badge job very, very seriously.
<laughs> so as you can see, that would be, we, we take it very seriously and we'll make sure that you get a quality experience. No, but to be fair, um, we have been working really, really, really hard to make sure that uh, our program is still a lot of fun, that you're learning a lot, but that it's also very, very safe. We're following every single guideline uh, by the state and by Rainbow Council. We've had to adapt a lot of things, but we're ready and we're excited. You've got like one week left to sign up. So if you're thinking about doing it, now is the time to pull a trigger. Don't wait any longer. There is a full refund policy. And if you have any questions about it, uh, let us know and we'll help you get some answers to that. All right, here we go. As far as fishing derby, we believe that's still gonna be running. So if you have Cub Scouts or Scouts BSA, uh, fishing derby is a go for September 12th. That's for um, Scouts for $10 and adults it's $5, but adults you will need a fishing license if you participate. Um, as of right now, uh, the OA fall ordeal doesn't really um, affect the Cubs a whole lot, but if you yourself are participating, um, that is a go for September 11th through 13th. And we've got the virtual family campout, which is happening the 18th through the 20th. So I'm sure you've seen some posts about that. That's pretty exciting. Should be a good time. Um, IOLS and Baloo, as of right now, are still a go. Um, the uh, Baloo would be what affects you cub leaders the most. That's what you need to be able to, one person from your pack needs to have it to be able to take kids camping, um, which isn't really a concern right now, but if you want to do it because you uh, like camping and miss it, um, I happen to know the leaders are really fun for it. Um, IOLS, if you're interested in uh, getting your IOLS, you need that to be a scoutmaster. So if you are thinking about crossing over to a troop or if you're already doing that, um, that is something that could be on your radar to take now and then you don't have to worry about it when you cross over. Um, one more thing that uh, was brought to my attention today and I was asked by Ted um, to make sure everybody know knows that right now our council limits are 50 people outside. So it was 100, but it is now 50. Um, so you cannot exceed 50 people in an outdoor setting. Um, that may change. That may change from week to week, day to day. Um, but as of right now, it is a 50 person limit. Let's see, did I cover it all? I think I did. Also, if you are having a recruiting event, uh, please feel free to share that on the uh, district pages and we may even be able to share it on the main page. So if your uh, unit is having an event for recruiting, let us know. We'd be happy to help you out. Any other questions about current events and council? All right, then we are going to our talk about being thrifty. All right, here we go. Back to screen share. Da, 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 da. Here we go. So we've heard a lot uh, of packs from a lot of packs that they are charging a lot of money for recharter fees and that they're having uh, struggles with uh, making sure that they have enough funds for the year. Um, on the same hand, we're hearing about a lot of practices that we thought uh, with experience we could share some alternative ideas to help your pack save money. Because I know right now it's pretty difficult with the fees have gone up and people are struggling. Um, scouting should be accessible to everyone at every level of income, uh, which means we need to do our part to be thrifty. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is uniforms. Keep your requirements for the uniform simple. Um, consider your lowest income families. So if you're a pack and you want everybody to look sharp and have the pants and have the socks and everything, really take into consideration uh, your lowest income families. They may not be able to do that and they may be too embarrassed to say anything about it. So consider keeping it simple down to the basics. 
You could also consider uh, a tradition of passing down the necker and or hat. If it becomes a pack tradition, you'll get less pushback from the parents where you'll have your, um, your weebelows passing down their neckerchief to the bears and the bears passing down their neckerchief to the wolf. Um, that might be something to consider because then there are less that you have to purchase every year. You could also consider a lending closet if you don't have one yet for your unit. Um, be sure we've learned from experience. Um, mark all the clothes with uh, your pack number on the back. Uh, keep a checkout list of who has what items and ask them you know, when they've outgrown it or when they're done, so please return it. Uh, you may want to consider a parent contract when you're doing this so that you can be sure that the uniform pieces get back to you and people feel a little bit more obligated to return them if they've had to sign a sheet that says, yes, I promise I'll return this when we're done with it. Um, encourage a culture of donating uniforms back to the pack when your kids cross over. Uh, I know my kids, we donated all of our uniform parts back so that other kids could have the scouting uniforms. Also, if you are part of your committee, watch for used items uh, for sale online for cheap. Sometimes you get really lucky and can get uniform uh, shirt for about $5 on Facebook Marketplace. Buy it, throw it in your pack, lending closet, and you're all set for when you have a family that comes in who's really struggling with the cost of the uniforms. Activity shirts. Um, some of my favorite hints from experience on keeping the cost of activity shirts low is to use one color when you're getting them printed. One color costs a lot less than making them bright and shiny with lots of color. Uh, you can also print them locally, use a local printer, and ask them to keep the screens for future prints. And then you can do that. To do that, you can keep the same design year to year, and you just ask them to use the same screen. And then you're not paying for a new design every year and people can wear the same shirt from year to year and they don't feel like they have to buy the next one to make everybody match. Um, so those are some ideas to keep the activity shirt low. And then the other thing to consider is if a family is really struggling with uniforms and you're having trouble locating a uniform for them, consider just saying, hey, you know what? Just wear activity shirt for now until we can figure it out. And that is perfectly acceptable. Just so everybody knows you're not allowed to uh, deny someone participation in scouting because they don't have the uniform. So even if they don't have it, they still get to participate in everything that your pack does. Can't make them wear it. Neckerchief slides. So Cub Scouts have a different one every year. Um, but Cub Scouts are allowed to use different neckerchief slides. They don't have to use the one for their, um, one for their level. You could do all kinds of crafts to make neckerchief slides. Um, and it's a lot of fun and it fills a lot of dead space during pack meetings. So if you're having, say, um, Pinewood Derby and you need something for them to do, then you can have a neckerchief station where they're building neckerchief slides. Popcorn, um, Legos, the ones that look like the Liberty Bell in Texas, those are uh, simply plaster that's been poured into uh, candy molds and then they take paint really, really well. Um, you could also have someone volunteer to do knots and woggles and tie woggles for all the different levels. And finally, you can go European. <laughs> in most other places in the world, scouting, they tie a friendship knot with their neckerchief. And you could start that tradition to where you don't even have a slide and they get lost. Let's be honest, they get lost all the time anyway. Uh, so you, you could tie friendship knots for your pack instead. Going to blue and gold. Consider keeping the theme blue and gold to reuse your decorations year after year. Um, it's super fun to make it cowboy themed and it's super fun to make it spaceship themed and, and those things are well and good, but you could still consider the main bulk of your decorations to be blue and gold and then put them in a tub and use them again year after year after year so you're not spending money every year on decorations. Uh, blue and gold is scouting's birthday, so make it a birthday party. Use blue and gold and make it a birthday party. Um, one fun tip is to use legal size paper and print placemats. And that keeps kids busy, it makes the table look festive, you hardly shelled out any money for it. Finally, my biggest thing is they won't remember the small stuff. 
go big and simple. So you may have someone in your pack who wants to spend $10 on each center place of an intricate camping site. That's super cute and all the moms go, I love it. And the kids are like, that's cool. And then they're off running to do other stuff. So really, if you want it to be memorable, they're gonna remember their Cub Master in a dinosaur costume. They're going to remember, um, they're gonna remember the life-size cutout of, you know, whatever. They're not gonna remember the, the super cute, painstaking mom expensive uh, centerpiece in the middle of the table. So go big, keep it simple. Um, for food, food is a uh, consideration this year. Right now we're not allowed to do food. But should in the future we be allowed to eat again in a group, um, if finances are a problem, consider a snacks only, where everybody brings one snack item, um, or an ice cream bar uh, station for blue and gold. Doesn't have to be a full meal. You don't even have to have a meal, but you can make it something other than a meal. Um, I guarantee kids love that. We've done it before. It's a lot of fun. Um, you could make it a family potluck where everybody brings parts rather than catering something in. Um, which we've done pretty much in my pack when we were in the pack, like all the years we were in it. Um, one thing to consider would be having a wash station. You can't do it right now, but in the future, have a wash station and use mess kits. Ask everyone to bring a mess kit and wash up uh, at a wash station. If you're not sure how to do that, talk to your local troop and they will be happy to bring their wash stations for you. Um, instead of disposables, which can add up and frankly are just really not something we as scouts want to uh, promote because we are, we reduce, reuse, and recycle. You could have each family bring their own food picnic style. So that is something we could do right now. So if consider that in the spring, you could each have everybody bring their own picnic lunch, picnic dinner. Um, and keep in mind for most packs have a tradition of baking the Cub Scout cakes. It's all about the cakes anyway. Kids aren't gonna care if there's chicken or hot dogs or whatever. They wanna eat the fun cakes. Entertainment, again, consider birthday party games, simple stuff we did when we were little at birthday parties. It's fun for the kids, they'll enjoy it. Consider activity stations, so have rotations around the room for them to go to. Um, if you can't do a big show staffing entertainment, they're happy with that. Check with your families um, for presenter connections. You might be surprised who someone knows that they can get to come for next to nothing to your pack. Um, if you have money, a little bit of money, this, this could be your splurge, um, where you're cheap on everything else and then you wanna invite someone in to come and entertain. Uh, local animal rescues, musician, musicians, magicians, dinosaur guy, there's a guy who comes around with fossils and brings them. Those are all a lot of fun. Um, a lot of them aren't terribly expensive either and that would be more bang for your buck. Pinewood Derby, the track. It doesn't have to be a fancy track. Um, you know, dads especially seem to geek out over, I got this fastest aluminum track ever and it's amazing and it has timers and it was $3,000. Are you being thrifty if you're doing that? Um, you can, you can build tracks for a lot less. Uh, the, the wood track that's sitting in the closet gathering dust, it might be just fine because really the kids just want to see the cars race and they don't really care that it's the fastest, most up-to-date track ever. Um, you could also consider sharing a track with other packs and having um, times where you exchange it and pass it around. You have to coordinate a little, but it would definitely be something you could do without spending a lot of money. Food. My biggest key for food is ask parent volunteers if who, who wants to. Does anyone want to? And nine times out of ten, you'll have a parent who says, yeah, I want to do that. And then they bring something that's amazing and they blow everybody away. And then it didn't cost your pack anything, too. Um, or you could consider keeping the event short and don't even serve food. Food's not a requirement for a derby. And if your derby is lasting like four hours, maybe you want to revisit that and say, mm, maybe we can make it shorter. And then you don't need to serve food. Awards. This is my favorite. Um, so my favorite thing to do with the awards is to make them um, and to ask for parent volunteers to make them because this is a great way to get people involved in your pack that haven't been before because chances are pretty good you got a parent back there who's not real keen on being on the committee or a little nervous to do that but they may have some skill like making something that will just be a huge help to you huge help to the pack and a lot of fun for the kids
So when I put this out to our pack, I got uh, a dad who built awards entirely out of car parts he welded together. And they were phenomenal. Um, they're not what's pictured here, but we did get something similar to that. I've had wooden ones with uh, spray painted cars on top. I built gigantic ones out of tins. Um, and, you know, the kids were all like, look at this massive trophy, and they love it. They don't care if it's made out of soup cans or wood or whatever. They, they want to see a giant big reward, and they think that's fun. Um, the other thing, you can do medals, like medals around their neck. You can make them out of old uh, lids to plastic things. If you go through some of the Cub Scout uh, how-to books, they have lots and lots of ideas for how to make really fun awards. And the best part is it's not eating up your budget um, to make them either or buy them or buy, you know, several hundred dollars worth of plastic stuff that's going to go gather dust. Um, so this is, this is a good way to do it and it's meaningful and it's often a way to in, uh, start involving other leaders. Bridging or crossing over. Con uh, consider sharing a bridge with another pack. Uh, there are lots of packs who would let you borrow their bridge if your pack doesn't have one. You could ask a Scouts VSA troop to pioneer a monkey bridge, which is something that my troop did last week. They built a monkey bridge. If you don't know, that's like the stick, the cross poles, and there's ropes between them. And it's a lot of fun. Um, and that costs, again, next to nothing. Or you could even, I saw someone use a playground a bridge at a park, and I thought that was very clever. Um, we talked about passing down the neckers or hats. That's a good way to keep uniform costs low for families. Packs and den meetings. Keep it simple, make it fun. If you've been in this for a while, you're probably tired of hearing that because it used to be at the end of every single training video. Um, but it really is true. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money. You don't have to um, make it big and showy. You just keep them moving, do a lot of stuff outdoors, and uh, make sure that they're having fun and not sitting. They're sitting in class or in front of the computer all day. Keep them moving around. They're going to have a blast. Um, two references are the Cub Scout Leader Book and the Leader How-To Book. The Leader How-To Book has some fantastic references into all kinds of crafts and projects and building things that you and games that you can do with your Cub Scouts. So if you are a leader and you haven't looked at these books yet, please, please, please look at these books because they're a lot of fun. And that's all I got. Which comes to our next thing. Uh, we are going to start talking about knots because a lot of people like to, they're knots. They like the bling. So the first one we're going to talk about are your leader knots. That's how it's my turn to share the screen. So there you go. Can you see everybody can see that? Yep. So what knots can I wear as an adult I earned as a youth? Because a lot of times we're like, for those who have been in scouting for so long, they're like, well, what can I wear? Well, here are a few. Actually, these are the only ones you can probably wear. The Arrow of Light. Uh, for those uh, Cub Scouts that earn the highest rank for Cub Scouting, the Arrow of Light can actually transfer over to the adult uniform. Um, we all know about the Eagle Scout knot that you can wear. Uh, but if you're maybe an adventure crew, you've got the Venture Silver Award. Or in the Sea Scouts, you got the Sea Scout Quartermaster Award. And one that most people tend to forget or not know about is the Religious Knot Award. Um, please keep in mind that uh, a scout is reverent and they we have it for every religious and faith that uh, you can think of. And if you earn whatever requirements they are for that particular faith, you get this purple knot and that one gets transferred over to the adult one. But don't worry, if you didn't get one as a youth, there are still some religious awards also for the adults, just so you know. The next thing we're gonna think of, talk about, and I just lost my page. Oops, give me a second here. There we go. We are going to move on to the Cub Scout Award. And that is on recruiting. So the recruiter's patch. Uh, so a lot of times people don't understand how this works. These are for the youth. Um, a Cub Scout can actually 
re uh, earn this by basically inviting a friend or someone, a neighbor, and if they can get them to join, um, they get this recruiter's patch and it goes right underneath um, the, the pocket, the right pocket, left pocket, one of the pockets. I can never remember because <laughs> I'm always backwards. All right. Um, it could be any member. It could be Cub Scouts, Scouts BSA, Venture, Sea Scouts, whoever can get someone to join, they automatically get this. Um, some, pa some units actually have specific requirements. Um, it could be just simply they brought someone or, or simply um, having them join. Uh, there's no real limitations except for the fact that it says um, it, it just someone to, to bring a friend, to recruit a friend to, to think about scouting. So something to keep in mind. So which brings us to our safety minute. Hold on, I need to get my safety vest on because <laughs> I need to be safe for this. All right, so one of the th safety minutes that we're speaking of is actually on returning to scouting. Please keep in mind that uh, our checklist from BSA is a little bit different than what the council has, okay? But this is a good start on where to begin. Um, usually the word safe help can, uh, gives you an idea. Um, understand the local and state guidance on preventing COVID. Engage your chartered organization and local council on necessary adjustments and conduct the before you gather protocol. Uh, for the A, how about assessment? Identify participants who fall under the CDC's guides, a group of high risk individuals. You should know your scouts and your adult leaders by now to actually know who falls in those categories. F, uh, fitness and skill. Review those annual health and medical records. Just because we're not camping and we haven't been doing anything does not mean that those cannot be up to date. You must have those up to date medical records on hand for all participants. E, equipment. Verify uh, that hand washing, hygiene, and cleaning supplies are available and are used properly. Maybe we need to kind of think of a song or something for those little ones to learn how to wash those hands all the way. Uh, monitor social distancing interaction. So this document will be on our Facebook pages. So if you need to uh, find it or would like to reference it, this is a very good one. But more importantly, you the one that you really need to follow is the one from council because those are going to be more specific on what our council will allow and not allow. And I know Angelique can mention a little bit about it during our info minute, as well as those guidelines that council puts out also follows the CDC guidelines. So it's within those ramifications that we need. And I think I do not have that, um, but they it is on our Facebook, Council's Facebook page, what they currently are. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is if your unit has not started meeting yet, before you start meeting, you need to email your uh, district commissioner and your district executive to let them know that your unit has been cleared by your charter to start meeting again. You are not allowed to start meeting unless your charter has said, okay, and you've met the requirements. So make sure that you let them know they're waiting to hear from you. If you haven't yet, they're gonna assume you haven't been meeting. And if you're not sure who your district executive is, it's um, Jarvis Franklin for Wapilanaswa and Jennifer Sewall for um, Ishkote. And if you don't know what district you're in, throw it in the chat and we'll let you know. <laughs> if you're north of 80, you're Wapilanaswa. If you're south of 80, you're Ishkote. Yeah, pretty much. Um, there's a few little pockets in there, but yeah, we'll let you know. Um, so if you are one of those units that are meeting, you we need to have some pre-event screening checklist. Uh, so a lot of times if you are working and they're like, they take your temperature, we all know that the temperature is the one of them, but then they start asking you all these questions. And a lot of times you're like, well, where do they get these questions? Well, guess what? We have them. Do you, are you, are you I'm working it on it. I've lost it. It's here. 
I will post it in the page um, and that it has a, it has a flow chart for what you need to do to screen everybody as they enter. Long story short, the most important thing is that you are keeping temperature records of every single person who is coming to your meetings. Um, so that way if someone gets sick, Later, you have a list of who was at that meeting and what temperature they had. Exactly. And if something comes up, we know exactly who they are, where they were, and who had contact with them. So we speaking of those medical forms. Sorry, sorry. just a quick, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. As an older, it, are we not then creating a medical record and all sorts of like HIPAA stuff? According to council guidelines, we are supposed to track temperature and, and people. Um, if you need to talk to, I mean, don't get me wrong. I totally understand the, yeah. the people, but the temperature, um, if you are uncomfortable with that, you could, you know, create a record of temperatures without names and you'd still be taking the temperatures. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. I mean, have, yeah, still take the temperature, but not record it. If yeah, you, I mean. yeah. If you have some, um, big questions like that, we can try and get you a more specific answer, um, directly from the council key three. Um, but I would say above all, super important to keep track of everybody who's there and take their temperature. I know a lot of, unit, thank you. A lot of units sometimes will take the temperatures, but they don't announce it, mm -hmm. uh, which also follows, a uh, kind of gives you within that HIPAA guidelines because all you're doing is taking temperatures. So, um, yes, according to Kevin, who's here, he's our mentor. He is saying uh, recording the name is the most important for contact tracing. So yeah. definitely do that, at least the name. Um, the, go ahead. All right. So a lot of you probably do not know this, but there is a new um, medical ABC form. Uh, that is also has been pushed out uh, earlier this year that needs to be used. Um, they're starting to phase out the old form. So if you're using the old form, um, start looking at for the new one. We will also be posting that one on our Facebook pages. It is a uh, fillable PDF. Um, I usually tell my, my, my parents, it's like, fill it out, download it, save it, and then everything is there. The only thing that won't get filled out is the C form. And I see that Sandy had asked a question about uh, the difficulties getting into doctors. Um, you are going to have to roll over that a little bit until you can see the doctor. So A and B, you don't need a doctor to fill That's out. That's exactly it. So A and B, you don't need it. It's only for C, and it's only for, some, for over 72 hours of camping anyway. So no one's camping. Um, for over 72 hours, so you're pretty much okay at that point. Unless you're taking wood badge and then you, as the adult, need to have your C for wood badge. That's true. Yes. <laughs> With that being said, if there's any more questions, yes, go ahead and please put that in the chat. Um, but we're going to want to give lots of time to Melissa, who is our, our guest today, and she is going to talk to us about membership because we all want to know how can we do membership while we're in this wonderful situation we're in. It's all you. Okay. Thanks away. everyone. So, um, yeah, so I want to talk to you guys about membership. Um, and I want to see, does any, has anybody had a recruiting event? Can you like raise your hands or put them in the chat? <laughs> Have we had some? It's hard for me to see all the participants. Let me see couple people. How have they gone? Have you done virtual ones? Anybody done a virtual one? Want to tell us a little bit about it? I would prefer this to be a little less lecture, a little more participation. So hopefully anybody have any any good or bad stories? Did anybody have one that didn't go so well and looking for some better tips or is everybody just starting and nobody's really had one? Sandy, I saw you raised your hand. Do you want to tell us a little bit about yours? You're on mute though. I think it's just really hard to know what to do in the era of COVID when some people are unhappy with the amount of stuff that we're doing virtually. Some people don't want to do anything but virtually. Mm -hmm. It's I think it's a challenge right now. Yeah. We did a popsicles at the park uh -huh. uh, where we broke into small groups with uh, different admin people. Mm -hmm. uh, mingling into those small groups mm -hmm. so that we weren't converging all the adults mm -hmm. in one centered position. 
-hmm. Everyone had a check-in station where they came in and got their temperatures done. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the admin people were able to be out there physically talking to parents and mingling with them while the kids played on the uh, the playground. Fantastic. And so, and and what was the end result? Did you get did you get some new kids or no? Yes, we did. We ended Great. up uh, getting about four more new kids, uh, and then a couple of rollovers from another. So we did good. Fantastic, fantastic. So you know, right now is still the height of typical recruiting season. You know, I, we usually don't start our recruiting until I think we were supposed to do it uh, Tuesday when school was supposed to be having supply drop off, uh, but that didn't happen. So um, I, I wanted to tell you a little bit about um, what PAC 91 has done. So um, Daniel reached out to me because I'm, I'm, I am on the district membership committee and we're always looking for more people. So if you wanna come, let me know. Um, and he reached out to me and said, you know, I, I, I want to try this idea of a virtual recruitment just to see how it would go, you know, and, and he wanted to do it in July and we never recruit in July. And when we recruit in May, usually we get, you know, two people to show up to the park or to the library or wherever we're at. Um, so I wasn't too positive on the whole thing, but I, th I was like, let's just give it a try. <laughs> we actually got a, um, like, 20 people to sign up for our virtual event and in the end we I think the whole event gave us about 10 new scouts um, and so it, it went so well we're doing it again um, next week so I wanted to kind of show you guys what we did for that and some feedback thank you so um, I kind of want to show you guys what we did for that and if you have any questions so you can kind of see the technical side of it because it is a little technical um, but I think it worked really well so let me share my screen and and I did not create a, some of this stuff and I'll show you what parts I created um, but I want to show you my I'll just share my whole screen so let's see share screen can you see my screen so the first thing we did was I had I created a zoom meeting I guess that's really what I should show you first, which is over here. So you can you can go to, you have to have the full Zoom account and council does have one. So you can talk to Daniel if you don't have a paid Zoom account for yourself or for your unit. But if you go under meetings, this is the key thing here. What I did was you see this little registration is required. That's how you all got in here today too. You have to check this box. And when you check this box, you can come down and then let me see, I think I might have to like save the whole thing. So I'll just show you the meeting that I have set up is here for the next one. And you see that once you have that set up, you get this whole section down here and you can edit your registration options and you can ask for custom questions. So you can require that they give you their name and then under, oops, sorry, under custom questions, I asked, what grade is child entering? So I know, am I getting potential lions? Am I getting potential weeb twos? Um, and I know who's coming. They cannot share these links. I know that I'm planning this event. And right now I have myself and two more people already signed up. So it's not a waste for me to take my Wednesday night and nobody's gonna show up. Um, and then under the email settings, you can, and that's my membership chair, you can edit, the email that they get so it, it gives you the standard stuff but you can like tell them um you know who to contact and you can i put in we we created a little highlight reel video so when they when they say you know when this this email you guys got for this meeting that says welcome here's your link it has this information in it any questions so far okay so um the one thing i don't like is somewhere in here i checked send an email to the host when somebody registers that that just doesn't it doesn't work i don't know why it doesn't work <laughs> but you can come in here and you can see when this number is higher than this number you can hit edit and you can see who they are and you can um see who's listed and you can see their their name and their email address and then if you click on their name you can see any custom questions and answers and you can approve or deny people accordingly so you know that also helps so that there's, you know, that Zoom bombing thing where you just have random people show up and you don't know who they are. 
at least it tries to prevent that from happening because you may have scouts and ho hopefully you're having the, the kids joining the parents hearing about your, your event or about your pack. So once you have that Zoom link up here, it gives you the link that people need for registering. Then we had Daniel create us a public event. So if you don't have a public Facebook group, um, he was able to create that for us. We have only private for our, just for sharing pictures within our unit. So he was able to create an event for us and it has you know the details that pre-registration is required. And we put in here no later than an hour before because we had people frantically trying at like 7.02 last time <laughs> when we started at seven to like get in and they couldn't because they didn't register. So we're hoping that they will register at least an hour beforehand. And so we put that out, shared it publicly, and then you can see like we meet at Eagle Point. So I am a member of Eagle Point Families. And why are you not going away? But it says, hey, did you know we have a pack right here? Come and join. <laughs> and and then you know you can you can see who's liking it, you can see who's commenting on it, and try to you know get the word out about your event. So that's all the sharing that we did um, for our event. And so it was really helpful. We like I said, we got almost 20 people to sign up last time to to come to that meeting. And then it looked like this. We just sat there. There was a couple of us in our uniforms and we talked for maybe 10 minutes. And, and we literally just went down. It was my membership chair. She's fantastic. Jen Schiffo, her husband's there, Dave. Hi, Dave. Um, they did a, they did a fan, she did a fantastic job. Just really nuts and bolts. Who, what, where, when, why, how of, of, of our pack. What is Cub Scouts? What is a den? When do we meet? Where do we meet? How, you know, and then we talked, how much does it cost? Um, I jumped in a little bit as, because I'm also committee chair, because there were questions about COVID and how we're meeting and, you know, mentioning that, you know, it's my job as committee chair to make sure we're following all the rules and listening to what council says, listening to what the state and local officials say, you know, trying to ease par parents' minds, talking about how we're doing virtual things and some small group in-person things. So lectured for like nine, 10 minutes. And then we just opened the floor for questions. After that was all over, um, we invited them the very next day to the park and we got a good number of them to show up at the park. We brought some of our scouts with us. They played, parents asked follow-up questions. We were able to hand out physical paperwork for registering if they didn't have it, if we didn't email it to them already. And in the end, like I said, nine, 10 scouts signed up. So we're trying it again. That was our event for, for next week. And I'm really hoping that it's gonna be as successful. The, the, the interesting thing is that a lot of the people that were in the call, there were some people like you guys just sitting watching their computers, but there was like two or three moms also making dinner <laughs> and having kids running around. So I'm not sure, is it, did we just strike at a really good time when everybody's so stuck at home and looking for something to do? Or is Zoom really opening this avenue where I don't have to give up an hour of my time to drive out to the library? You know, and we really did a social media push to, to, to advertise versus like signs in the neighborhood and things. So next week will be a big test to see, was July just special or, or is this really a good method? So that's what we did. I, I found it very successful. I think if, if next week is, is close to that, we may consi consider this long term. It's a lot easier on us too to not have to book a space and take you know two or three hours out of our time to go over there, set it all up, um, to, in in order to just share that you know ten minutes of information with people. So that's what I have. Um, what questions do people have? Anything? No questions. You're all so quiet. If you have any, if you have any questions about how to set it up, please feel free to reach out. Um, I will put my email in the chat. Um, Good job, Melissa. We love you. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. I, I do have like half my pack here and my husband, so thanks, guys. <laughs> uh, Kevin, Kevin uh, posted on the, the the chat box just as an FYI, if has people haven't seen it, is that um, if you don't have a Zoom account, other units have them. You can ask to use theirs, yeah, as or, well, or maybe yeah. even your friendly roundtable commissioner, yeah, Would or membership that? committee members. <laughs> if you need me there to introduce you and then sit quietly, I can do that too. <laughs> So just let me know. Um, we do have a paid account, so I, um, just for our family. So if anybody needs to share that too, it's it's not a big deal, um, and it's not that expensive either to have a, to have a paid account if you're considering, you know, where where to be a little bit um, spending your money with your pack. Speaking of thrifty, you know, if you're going to be doing virtual events, it kind of sucks when they end at 40 minutes. So 
um, <laughs> you might want to consider paying for a month or two. And it is month to month. So that's, you know, my little plug for Zoom, which I don't get any money for. Um, so yeah, share with, share with people. Um, and yeah, so good luck on that. If anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out. If you need help sharing your events or planning them, I'm, I'm more than willing to help. All right. Thank you so much, Melissa. That was some really good information. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that that worked and I'm super excited to see if that works for other units too. So if you try this and it's successful, please give us a shout and let us know. Um, and we would love to share it and make sure everybody is seeing it. Um, cause this, this is a weird time and I think we can make the best of it. And sometimes we'll discover and stumble onto things that work just because we were willing yeah. to try something different. Mm -hmm. With Absolutely. that, we are at the end of our, um, our time together. Uh, thank you very, very much for all coming to our Cub Scout round table. Um, what do you think? Did you enjoy having information catered to just Cub Scouts or would you prefer to see both levels? in one meeting. Give it a shout if you're not. Cub Scouts is good. All Scouts is good? Okay. Cub Scouts, sorry. Cub Scouts, Cub Scouts is good, okay. Um, I think we get lost. I agree with that. Just, we get I mean, lost with like... the big kids. <laughs> Ahead, Before we, uh, we, we uh, say our final goodbyes, there's a couple things that we need to make sure that everyone who's on, make sure that you put your name and your pack or your unit number in the in the chat for us because we are taking attendance. And also for some of you who have not seen, um, we are looking at changing some things with Facebook. Um, so more information will be coming. So keep an eye out on those pages and you'll see what's going on. Is Spiffy rescheduling? I think the Spiffy ship has sailed for now, but Spiffy may rise again in the future. <laughs> is, is, there, is there any discussion of the refunds? Hey, Dave, did you send me an email this week? That was about a, Spiffy? That's Kevin Kantorski. He is the, he's the council training chair, so he's the person. I'm, I'm logging in. I know somebody emailed me about that this week, and I'm uh, about to reply uh, Thursday night yep. to my Saturday to get, ref, get caught up. Um, but the refunds, contact D. She can um, take the money and send it back to you or apply it towards a different uh, event. Wood badge is a great way to apply some of that money to. <laughs> Gotta push for wood badge, guys. It's fun, guys. All right. We have to get going because we have another one for Scouts PSA here in a couple minutes, and we have to reset for them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming tonight. We'll Good see you next month. All your faces, and hope to see everybody again next month. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thank you.